your life. What? <laughs> that wasn't a very clear sign that we're live. We got to work on our, our uh, you're supposed to go cut or whatever <laughs> action. Um, Don Matuska here again with Brett Wingfield with Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. And uh, kind of just showing you a little bit of the way we do things in the shop, I guess. And in weeks past, is this our fourth? This is our fourth segment on mounting mule deer. And um, this is what we have so far. All we've done to it um, after, I think, when we left off last week, we actually had to sew it up. Yeah. So we had a little sewing machine, Jacob, who uh, sewed that up. Yeah. Nice seam. We can't even find the seam anywhere. And that was a long incision. And I think we showed you, the viewers, how, how uh, if you don't like sewing long incisions, it's way easier to do it on the table flat rather than standing over a rounded deer head, you know, with an arched back and trying to make a nice, neat seam. So he did that for us, and we actually mounted it very similar to um, a tube cut. We had just a short cut up the neck. And uh, Brett showed you how to uh, insert the ear liners. We used uh, 200 MDs, I think it is. Uh, by Brian Olson, and they are probably as nice a mule deer shaped ear liner as you're going to find anywhere. Um, the new mule deer ear liners by Todd Payer. Um, eyes? Eyes, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> Eyeliners. Eyeliners. <coughs> Eyeliners by Todd Payer. No, the new mule deer eyes by Todd Payer, and we think they look uh, pretty convincing. They look very, very nice. Yeah, they're very, very nice. And so that's what we've been doing for the, so you, we can't get everything done in an hour. So we do as much as we can. And then after um, our segment is finished, we kind of get it to a place that we can stop so we can pick it up again next uh, week. So you probably notice on, on this deer, <clears throat> I don't know if this was the new Change Out Nose by Brian Olson, yeah. Change Out Mule Deer Nose. And um, that's a great, great time saver and anatomically accurate. I mean, you can't say enough about it. It's just a real fast way to make a perfect nose. Um, that nose, you can actually heat up. You can close down the nostril. You can open up the nostril. You can do all kinds of <clears throat> different attitudes with it. So we use that on here. And if you saw, a, I don't know, a few segments ago, you and I had a little competition about, I sculpted one out. Um, from scratch using common modeling tools and probably fix it sculpt or epoxy sculpt and you used a hot glue gun and I was soundly defeated by an hour and a half probably and uh, but that was just a demonstration I mean I worked as fast as I could and I don't think you even broke a sweat and had a perfect nose right off the bat we showed you how to cut the lip slot last week or the week before maybe and uh, that we can tuck our lip skin in we, um, um, like I said, you glued in the ear liners. Now, after this was all sewn up, we positioned our ears, and then we like to on the edges because it, anytime you we used a Pro One High Pace on the deer as well as on the ear liners, and anytime you use uh, water based or water soluble glue on your ears, they're not going to dry immediately but what will dry is the outside edges so once we had these edges aligned um, we knew the inside wouldn't be ready till the next day so <clears throat> we cut out little uh, pieces this is we call it fin carding it's our what we use on our fish but just we cut out little shapes of fin carding that we can paper clip on the edge of the ears and you can see what a beautiful sharp clean crisp edge now Deer ears do not exactly look like this, but once we brush them out and groom the edges and back brush it a little bit, it's going to give that edge of the ear a really nice loft and it's going to be very, very natural and beautiful. Um, but that's just our, um, I think it's a needle point, probably needle point screen, plastic screen. And um, save these, don't throw them away. So we did that off the camera, which you didn't see. Um, we also trimmed that nose skin because we had an exorbitant amount of nose skin. <clears throat> we trimmed it because inside of this nose, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Brian has a little ledge in which the skin should lay on and blend right in, leaving you hardly any finish work at all to hold the skin into the perimeter of the nasal passage. We put a little, um, I think this is just uh, plastic from a Walmart sack or something, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of plastic. That's a garbage bag. <laughs> oh. Some of those magic tricks where it just keeps coming. I'm going to have his heart on here in a minute. <laughs> Look at that. Now that, now, that shows you the depth <laughs> of Brian Olson's detail of his nose. That's very true. Oh my gosh. That was amazing. So we have our first question of the night. And if mm -hmm. we can guess, it is about the white tail noses. Are they ready? <laughs> oh, are they ready yet? Uh, we poured a mold yesterday. Um, we, poured, oh. we poured our per, first production mold and we will have our first parts out tomorrow. It's been a, <laughs> it's two steps back and one step <laughs> forward for a long time. It has. Um, we're excited though, we're getting very close. Very when very you're close. dealing with perfectionists, it's, it doesn't go as fast as it's supposed to. Um, also, this is the Sagebrush Series Mule Deer uh, mannequin, and uh, all I can say about them is people really, really like them. Did you not have a Yes, I did. So we, we went live. let's see, it was from Justin Brown, and I'll come up here in a moment. He said that he had the wonderful opportunity to try a Sagebrush Series form, and he has fallen in love with them. It is his go-to for every muley going forward. Um, and then he also said another thing about it, that since using our forms, people have started re requesting them for their own. And the feedback is so awesome from happy customers. I even had a customer bring in his deer that was just finished last year, and he wants a redo on the sagebrush form. Thank you so much. Wow, people like them. <laughs> they look like a mule deer. Um, the attitude, um, the posture is really, really attractive. Um, the, they're overwhelmingly popular. That's all I can say. Yeah. We, yeah. I, every every segment of live, I kind of tell you, we yeah. literally ship them out by the pallet loads, and we do. <clears throat> uh, there's a pallet going out today. Is there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and mean, there are are available with noses. Yeah. And many, not all, but many of the individual mannequins will accept either a medium or the small. Um, Brian Olson earliner, or I mean nose, artificial nose, get my parts mixed up. You should see me mounted here. <clears throat> um, get the parts mixed up. But anyway, um, the nose comes, I think they stretch wrap them on, yep. and that's how it comes to you, and then all you have to do is a little bit of hot glue and position it where you want it and stick it on and mount them. Sometimes there will be a little bit of modeling where the plastic meets the foam, so watch that. You don't want to have a raised line or a sunken area for some reason. Uh, anytime we get expansion of foams and different plastics and things like that, occasionally the fit won't be perfect, but it's pretty darn perfect. Yeah. It's yeah it's perfect it's, as we can make them. Um, so make sure that line is, that there's no line telegraphing. Through. Yes, Caitlin? All right, and then we had a question from Callan Cowley, and I am Assuming he's talking about the white tail um, deer noses, he said, are there small and large noses or are they all one size? Small and medium at this time? Um, small and medium me mule deer. Yep. Um, our white tail is available in a, in a medium first. Um, the, the large should be right behind it, um, but the, the medium is the one we'll have first. And then Lori Bill would like to know, um, she said, your extra strength Hot glue sticks, do you recommend a hotter glue gun? I don't think so. Our, our, our hot glue gun is, mm -hmm. a, is a Sure Bonder, I think it's the yeah. brand that we sell. And you know, I've seen them in stores. They're not a special glue gun. And um, yeah, they'll heat it just fine. And we haven't actually, we should do that sometime. Put the test to the extra yeah. strength and regular and just yeah, and see. see. But uh, we do use it when we feel we need extra strength, thinking that we're getting it, but we're not entirely sure. <clears throat> it didn't break off. No. <clears throat> okay. Um, now, when when you use a water-based glue um, like um, True Bond or um, 
Dermagrip or any of the water-based glues, you will have to watch your ears because they're not gonna, I mean, they'll dry on their own, but they have a mind of their own also. So as they're drying, continue to take your fingers daily and press that in. And the first day is not when they want to stick. The second day is kind of when they want to stick. Um, I think I said last week, Libra and Martinez um, kind of knew a lot about ears and adhesion and made some really good ear liners. He always said drumming is cause when the skin dries before the glue. So <clears throat> it helps to keep that inner skin a little bit moist, spritz it with water, and just keep it moist. All right, so Rick Regola, and I apologize if I don't say your guys' names right, um, wants to know what the chance of you guys producing a poster of your dear mannequins to have so customers can choose a pose, or is there are one already? Thanks. Um, we did that, what, two years ago? Yeah. <clears throat> and we will. Um, time for a new one? It's time for a new one. We have the new XP mannequins. We have the XP SWs. We got more Sagebrush series. Um, we got a whole lot of bears, so I think we're gonna have to devote one side yeah. to bear type creatures and the other side to deer type creatures. But um, that will be on the agenda for next year, I would think. And then Travis Miller says, great looking mule deer, made an order on Tuesday and it arrived today, only two days later here in Ohio with a very, very fair shipping co cost. Matuska for the win. And then we have another question um, from Mike Grady says, sorry for the off topic question. How well does the, okay, I'm not gonna pronounce this right, Hyonis hide and hair dye work on the hair of an old faded white tail? Ooh, I have not tried that. On an old faded white tail, that would scare me a lot. I don't know. Um, we have <clears throat> our best attempt at coloration of hair was with pan pastels on that gazelle that we did one time. And um, you have to spray a fixative on it, but you put it on like makeup and mm -hmm. that worked. Um, <clears throat> the Hyannis hair dye is more for the skin underneath, I think. For the, I think it's leather dye, dye. Not, yeah. not hair so much. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that old hair would be coarse. So cut that down. And pardon me if I'm <clears throat> dying. <laughs> dying over here. Um, I was gone and I contracted a coronavirus no. or, or uh, <laughs> the Secchi's virus or I'm not entirely uh, sure what it was, but mm -hmm. uh, I came back with it. Blue moon virus. Blue moon virus. Um, Stephen Cullen says that a poster would be a great addition to the catalog. I think so too. Mm -hmm. Should have had it yesterday. Yep. Um, all right, so once you allow your, your deer to dry, <clears throat> you notice also, um, we didn't have any pins in here. There were no pins, right. there's no staples, there's no brad nails. Um, when I started doing deer taxidermy, lips all pulled out. So what do you do? You put all kinds of brad nails out of it all around here, pins like crazy, and then your lips don't pull out. The reason the lips were pulling out is because I wasn't smart enough to know how to pin them properly, I didn't have that skill, and I probably made way too big a lip slot and I didn't know that you should glue them up in there. Hence, no matter what I did, my lips pulled out. <clears throat> same with the nose, same with the um, tear ducts. Eyes will pull away. That's usually a uh, operator air. It's from us not thinning it good enough or, or that sort of thing. Um, so after being in this business for a long time and seeing what the big boys do, um, and a good high paste and a thin skin, you should be able to push this skin tight against the mannequin, provided you like what the mannequin's offering you, and push in your detail, and you shouldn't have to pin anything. Um, we don't use pin. We spend hours with brad nails. We had a little brad nail machine that shot like 20 gauge brad nails, and we would put a million in our man. Remember that? I do remember. I think they gained a pound and a half. I know. And if you ever got brad nails that weren't galvanized sometimes that would get slipped in um a couple years down the road you'd have little orange spots all over your gear so we learn as we get older but it shouldn't be necessary um, these mannequins fit well um if you size it properly just your skin you're not going to get a lot of drumming um you know it, if you go too big you're going to have trouble everywhere but if if it's a comfortable fit 
press your detail in, and you'll be great with that. We got, uh, and then just wait till the whole skin is stabilized before you um, start taking off the edges of the ear carding. You don't have to do that carding. We think it gives it a nice, attractive edge. Um, you can leave your nose in. You can leave it in for months if you want to, but um, I don't know. I suppose this was just a, this has been here a week, yeah. and in deep down inside the ear is still dampish, you know. So it could be another week. Okay, should we show them something? Yeah, how to finish this? We're gonna break this into two parts, I think. Okay. Hopefully, uh, we have to deal with the nose, the lips, the eye, the nictitating membrane, the caruncle. Um, the lacrimal crease, and then in addition to that, there's a whole lot of painting left to do also yeah. because this is all dried up leather, and we need to restore that to vibrant builder. Yes, we do. Um, shall we? Sure. Um, the first thing I would say that we'll do, and we've done some of this, we prepped them just a little bit um, before we got we went on today, but. We really like to groom them out. We groom them out exceptionally well. Any loose debris, any hair that might be dislodged, we really, really want to make sure that we lifted this hair and created moss. Um, so we'll go through several times over the next couple of steps, and we'll continue to continually groom this hair, and it will create a more and more relaxed and softer look. Um, pay close attention to hair patterns. Um, we're not going to get them all completely groomed in perfectly today, but we're going to start influencing the hair direction. You should have done that during the mounting process, but um, we're going to make sure and soften that coming to the back of the ears. A little bit of paper towel in the ear will take them out now. <coughs> take it out before you give it to the customer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've gotten that before. Um, Nice, crispier edges will soften that by back brushing that ear just lightly. And you would go through the whole ear, softly brushing in, and then come back with the air compressor. And we want to do that just for noise and volume and so forth on, on live, but we would normally back blow this and just get all that loose debris and any of the high paste or anything loose and dry out of him so that he doesn't leave any dust on your sure. well, Now this hide, I'm going to assume it's very, very clean because as I was hoping you put it on last week, it smelled oh, like you came yeah. from the beauty part. What <laughs> yes. did you do to it? Um, so we washed it. We wash our hides. Um, as we rehydrate them the very last time, we usually give them just a, a little smidgen of a shampoo, um, making that hide just nice and soft and supple cleans it up, it loosens up any debris that might have been in the um, low in that down and dander um, and uh, gives us a nice nice <coughs> smelling hide, but it also seems to relax the hide very well too. Um, we've used downy and um, a couple other little softeners too and they all seem to help. So um, all that, that done, it's time to look at eyes and nose, those are the first things that I like to work on with them after we get the grooming done, just because those are things that take time to dry. Um, do you want to seal the pad sure. of the nose? Um, I would first look inside, we've already pulled the plastic, I don't need to get ahead. Um, and maybe we want to show them the interior of the nose over here. Oh, I can do that, where's my little flashlight, look at this. Yeah. Get a close up of this. I mean, that, is, that packing has just been removed. We haven't done any finish work no inside there. No remodeling whatsoever. That's pretty. And yeah. Thank you. And so you can come back. You can do, there's just a very, very slight edge that we would mix up. Um, some Pixit Sculpt. We can do that along the skin edge on the inside if you see anything that needs to be done. Um, you can even color your fix-it scope. Um, we can do that with flocking or we can do that with uh, oil paint. Um, Some people use um, clay flour. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so we like to use a fix-it sculpt. There are a thousand different um, epoxy materials. We have 
fix up sculpt, we have epoxy sculpt, mm -hmm. we have magic smooth, we have um, a smooth out, we have magic sculpt, clay. Yeah, clay, yeah, reclaims clay. Uh, um, we have everything now. Well, how did you choose fix up clay. sculpt? People want to know. Um, I like fix it sculpt for a couple of reasons. One, it, it gives us a neutral base color. So fix it sculpt offers a a light white and a gray. Um, I believe the gray might be the hardener. Um, we're going to mix the two parts, and when mixed, when mixed thoroughly, we have a nice white creamy color that's easily easily colored. We don't have to overcome a dark gray. Um, did you have a question? Yes. Jeff Schneider would like to know what kind of shampoo do you prefer? Uh, we have a shampoo. Yeah, we have a good, a good we shampoo. Have shampoo that um, anything that we use here, we came up with it over years. We always test stuff. And we don't want it acidic. We don't want it basic. We want it to stay kind of neutral. Um, and our shampoo, we've used it for a long time. We've switched different brands, you know, over the years. But... Um, it's kind of a neutral. It's not gonna your hair's not gonna fall out. It's not gonna turn it acidic. Um, it's mild. Um, cleans them up really, really good. We use it a lot on our fur animals, also fur bears. Those of you that want to turn out these luxurious fur bears, like you see them in the wild, um, what our method is: we will mount the animal, the fox, the bear, um, whatever it happens to be. And then we will, if it's in the summertime, we'll take them out in the parking lot here and we will wet them down and we'll shampoo them after the eyes are set, after he's completely mounted. Um, in the wintertime, we've got a big double sink. We'll kind of position him over the sink and um, that, you know, we can shampoo him there. Just make sure it's very important to get the shampoo out because it's as bad as grease. And then you're going to have to blow dry that animal. So on a bear, I would say we would spend an entire day, we've got a big livestock blower, um, dryer, but we'll spend a day on a bear shampooing, grooming, and blow drying, which you think, oh my gosh, you could spend that kind of time. You gotta get paid for it, but the results are it's worth it. Unbelievable, yeah. they're fabulous, just fabulous. Absolutely, it's <clears throat> worth it. And the deer, this feels good, it smells good, it looks nice, Probably give it to a customer. Want them to have it there. Yeah, we want to, yeah. I mean, that's something. Anytime we do something in our shop and the customers come and pick it up, you know, you don't want to be afraid that he's not going to like it. You want to know ahead of time that he's going to like it and do the best job you can, and that's the result you're going to have. Um, so, Caitlin, I'm just going to take a little bit of flesh oil paint. Mix this up. I'm sure that we've done this on live before for other finishing demonstrations, but I'm going to do some of the oil paint and mix that to a flesh. Do you want to show them mixing in just a little bit of the red flocking? That's that is already mixed up. That's um, a mixed up uh, piece of fix it sculpt that I just and you have oil paint in there. Yeah, um, this is flocking like uh, cotton flocking. And we use it, we got a lot of different colors. We have greens and browns and all kinds of different colors. Some people use it for velvet on their antlers. Um, but something the red is good for is to, if you're ever doing membrane areas or areas um, like inside the nose, like you're trying to, to blend, I just put a little patty of red flocking. I think I got a little bit too much. You're gonna have a bloody nose, but. <laughs> And you can always add more and it doesn't dissipate like paint does and make it all one color it's going to be a little stippled which is kind of looks natural wait for me sure I've got a little bit of pink in this. You can see it started to take on a little bit of the oil color. I'm kind of a slow flocker mixer. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to come through and take a little bit of this. And I'm going to fill. I've got just a little spot right in the very front where our skin was short. Looks like it got cut a little bit short um, in the fleshing process. So I'm just going to fill that in with a very, very small amount. Blend that skin texture. Okay. 
And because we had enough skin on the top, it was able to roll roll under, and we don't even have any finish work up under the underside. Well, I like that. Okay, now here's a <clears throat> idea of what you get. Now, if your skin is gathered or you have a rise or some kind of wrinkle in there, you could carve it out. You could grind it down uh, because you're going to finish over it with uh, your epoxy. One spot. So we like to get all of the all of the epoxy work done before we seal. I jumped the gun just a little bit, try to hand that off. Did I go off script? Oh, I did. Oh, I went too fast. <coughs> I was trying to get moving. There we go. Okay. So we've got that blended nicely. And I'm going to come back over it with the brush and just lightly texture it um, to match that interior texture. That should finish up real nice. Now, we would do the same thing to the other side, mm -hmm. but in the interest of time. Um, do we want to seal? Seal it? Sure. Yeah. Now, my thinking, hand me that Mod Podge over there. Um, my thinking, in, we're going to texture the snows. And when you texture the nose, each one of these little segments, when I try to describe it to like students what to do, pretend that you have a room, here's your room, is made up of a whole bunch of pillows. You have to cover the entire floor with pillows. You want nice, rounded pillows. There can be no bare floor showing. And so treat your nose kind of like that surface of, surface of your nose. So um, we like to we texture with Mod Podge. There's been a lot of materials over the years. Um, and this seems to work good for us. We've used um, cri triple thick crystal glaze. Um, a lot of different things over the years. Elmer's glue tends to dimple in. It is not as elastic and does not stay as nicely mounted. But if I seems like if I texture the nose, I do not get the size of mound that I like unless I seal it first. If I seal it first, put down a little Mod Podge, and I'm gonna put Mod Podge with water, <clears throat> and I'm just gonna make a, a real thin little slurry, and I'm gonna seal that nose, just the surface, a little bit of water, a little bit of Mod Podge. I'm going to stir it up. And I would say I'm probably 60% Mod Podge and 30% water. And now I'm going to paint all of the bared skin area on the rhinarium of his nose. I am going to go over um, the little hair cells, but um, they will turn right back white again as soon as this dries. And now when you're doing deer in a commercial setting, you're going to have four or five or more deer so you're going to go from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other. Should have them on a bob fathery forehead. Bob fathery forehead, yep. Sarah DeJournet said, hello from Las Milpas, Honduras. Caught you at the end of our last clinic day on our medical mission trip. Thanks for all you do. Wow. And then Morris Stevens says, the wax in the paper cups don't cause any side effects. Just wondering. What was the question? Well, I think it. I that's think he's wondering if the wax no, no. and the paper. Okay. No, that's a very good point because um, we used to use a lot of lacquer paints, and yes, it dissolved. But no, my pod works great. It doesn't dissolve. Um, something else. We uh, we have our winter class in session, and we have students watching. <laughs> and uh, we kicked it. Now I, I coated the entire surface of the nose, the lip. Now, if you have any discrepancy in your lip, 
you're going to want to fix that with Mod Podge or Epoxy Sculpt or Fix a Sculpt or whatever, not Mod Podge, Fix a Sculpt or Epoxy Sculpt. And um, our lip is a little off centered. Um, before we get into painting everything and doing our finish work, we would correct that lip just by making it a little, you know, 16th inch longer on the side. So if you notice that, that's why. Um, but the students were real concerned when they started class about the whiskers on the face of the deer. And uh, like, how do you, if we flush them, the whiskers are coming out. Well, you have to flush them. And well, but I don't want to lose my whiskers. And every day we would go over the whisker thing. You know who you are. <laughs> but, uh, and that is a concern because deer have a lot of whiskers. Yes, they do. I have pulled them. I've mm -hmm. tried to put them back in. I've used a Dremel trying to flush around them. I've tried all different kinds of things. I finally resorted to, for commercial work, what stays, stays, what falls out, falls out. But that being said, look at all these whiskers. And we did nothing. That was a nice flush job on that entire face. And he has all kinds of whiskers. And we didn't do anything special for them. We didn't cut the roots to pull them out, but we didn't do anything special. So hopefully your deer um, will have whiskers too because of your poor fleshing like mine. <laughs> well, Ryan just tuned in and said hi. Oh, so oh. <laughs> can we put do a two together? Uh, <laughs> all right. Now, because I thinned that Mod Podge down so thin, oops, um, it's real thin, this is dry already. It's dry to the touch. But because I put a barrier down and it's sealed it, now we can come and build up our segments. Sure. Are you ready for that? Sure. Already? Sure. Ready already? <coughs> well, let's see. You can move on. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go ahead and lift him up and I'm going to. give you an idea, I went down and I said, I'm gonna get a brand new, we want these demonstrations to go smoothly, so new products and new equipment work better than stuff that's dried up on the shelf. But um, I, I picked the Easy Nose texture bottle. This is a texture bottle number two. And the Easy Nose have a bent gray siphon tube bottom. You take the top off, you put whatever medium you want to use to build up your nose. This is Mod Podge. I filled it probably two thirds full. And we're not going to, you won't use very much, but if it's not full, it, it's hard to make work. And <clears throat> what should happen is you should be able to get it going here. You should be able to make small segments on the surface of your nose. Or your table. Or your table. Now, there's a lot of different kinds. Uh, you have another favorite that you have? Or is oh, that I do. One? I do. I have one that's been with me for a very, very long time. And um, this is a different variety. It's got a, a tip a little bit similar to an airbrush tip, like an H airbrush tip. And you like this one because the little Europe pins will go right down the tube and keep it from unplugging. Same thing, Mod Podge in here. Now when we do this, um, what works the best is you, you'll be able to see all your segments. Now I'll explain to you um, while we're waiting here, on a white tail, a white tail has to me a much more fleshy nose, a mule deer has a darker, more dark gray nose. and. Um, so on a white tail nose, I often holler what you do, mm -hmm. but I often paint the surface of the nose flesh and kind of a, a vivid flesh. And as soon as it dries, you know, in a minute, 
I will take, if I'm using lacquer paints, I'll take lacquer thinner on a cotton swab or steel wool, and I will wipe the surface of the nose off, but the flesh will highlight all of the segments. Um, if you're using water-based paint, you can use any of the thinners that come with water-based paint, or you can use um, 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 steel wool, you can use cotton, whatever you want, or just plain old water. Alcohol. Yep, alcohol works good with water-based paints. But that will leave the segments colored with whatever color you put in, but the remainder of the paint got wiped right off the surface. When you do that, it makes, it outlines every single segment and it's way easier to see where they are and where to build them up. Are you ready? Oh, whoa. Yeah. Look at this. What happened to your eyes? They aren't as good as they used to be. They used to be pretty good. They used to be pretty good. But I don't think I can do this without my visor anymore. And I'm sure I'm not going to try and do it in front of I know, all a million students. viewers. I know. So we're going to recreate all those little pillow sections that Tom had talked about using the Easy Nose tool. I'm going to force the, the Mod Podge material down. And this is a handy tip. If you're, when you're doing any work with your nose, with your Easy Nose tool, keep all of your material down to the bottom. If you turn this back up and down, you're going to get air bubbles. So I like to get it down. I like to get it spraying. All right, I guess it's not spraying. You try like to get it moving. And then I like to keep pressure on it. So now, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to do about every other one of these. These are your magnifiers and oh my goodness. Do they magnify them? You magnify them. They make them look like they're king size California king pillows. Mypillow.com. <laughs> yeah. So we are just coming in here. And creating every, about every other one, every now and then I'll get them a little bit closer. Be very careful. Once you've done this for a while, you'll know your, your distance that you can get away with. I mean, creating these, otherwise um, they will leap together. And we're just going to go through and do every single one. I'm going around all of these little hair. Faces. And mule deer are a little bit smaller than white tail. White tail seem to be a little more bulbous. They are. They're very, very small. Now this is a extra step. We do it to all of our customer deer, and I would assume we spend forty-five minutes minimum on a deer nose, even when we get going really fast. Um, so make sure when you're doing all of these added extras that you're getting paid for. Yeah, absolutely. Can't stress that enough. These are these are things that not only do you want to get paid for them, you want to get credit from your customer for doing it. So make sure and show your customer the labor that you're going through and the, the reference material you're using to create all of these things so that they know you're giving them the very best product you can. And you can do half of them, finish up with half of them. It's nicest if you do the rest of them, the remaining ones, while it's still kind of white a little bit. You can see them easier. Yeah, absolutely. Once once they clarify, they once they dry, they turn clear, and they're very hard to tell um, from any certainty where you were, where you left off. So, um, I also like to work on the lower lip as well. I'll put texture on the on the bottom lip. Slightly different. Look at your reference material. Um, this will have a little bit of texture as well. And we would continue to go over the whole surface, probably in a couple different applications. It's nicest if you can do this while the while your surface your working surface is fairly level and flat. Tom turned him over for us and got him 
upright so that we had a nice wide level surface, but to get to here, I'm going to have to turn him around because we don't want these to sag. What else can we tell him on? Well, I see and I knew it when we tucked that nose in <clears throat> last week that uh, right here the hair kind of extends onto the surface of the nose. Ah, a little up and over. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like to keep it on that in yeah. inner wall. And yeah. in a case like that, I would probably take my scalpel or knife and literally shave that yep. off yep. and build my segments back to Absolutely. where Absolutely, this is a great time to do that. <laughs> just taking the very edge of the scalpel, laying it flat, and just scraping that edge ever so slightly. You're kind of just shaving that hair off. And yep. I, I knew that when I tucked that nose. And I was talking about stretching the nose, but then I didn't stretch it far. Ever so slightly. And now's a great time to do it because we can just build texture right over that surface area and move on. Make sure you're checking for symmetry and balance. A nice patch. And there's going to be a there'll be a lot of little things that you know better and you get kind of careless. And Caitlin's got the camera rolling and we can't stop, and so we force our way through when <laughs> normally we would be a little more careful. There's no second chances for you. <laughs> There's not? Yeah. I mean, we can make our own rules, but... <laughs> so shall we just... Shall we tip them up, give them a chance to look at kind of what we're doing, and then they can get into, get into an eye? Go ahead and finish that, but for in the interest of time, we'll like, yep. These Bob Father remodeling stands are great for a lot of reasons, but one thing is they have double set set screws with double double, double handles. And uh, so nothing's going to move if you tighten it up. It's got two handles here. Okay. Now you can see what he did. He got on the bottom almost two thirds. He got most of them, not all. But now when you get up to the top here, we can come back and we can get the, the inner, the ones we missed. So now I think if we move on to an eye, um, the next step would be to clean the eye up as clean and sparkly as we possibly can. Um, I'll do that with a Q-tip, some Windex. You can use steel wool. Um, you can use cotton, um, paper towels, newspaper, newsprint, whatever you're, whatever you're most comfortable with. I think we've got this one pretty good already. Um, if you're going to use steel wool, use really like four aught. It's more of a polishing steel wool than. Then, uh, something do be careful to make sure that they're not <laughs> acrylicized. Um, we want to make sure that we're working with glass anytime you use an abrasive. So um, double check, triple check. Um, we even have had the question in the last couple days on what we would do with scratch size, and we answer that about once a week. So, we do. Um, just keep your don't careful. scratch them. Be careful. Yeah. Eugene yeah. Beasley would like to know if you are using matte or gloss. Um, this is gloss. And it wouldn't matter to me if it was matte or gloss, but my final product I want to be gloss. Yeah. Um, deer noses, any of our live deer, when we had deer, um, their noses, they lick their noses constantly to collect scent molecules on their nose, which will go into their olfactory system, and they will be able to smell you much better. So if when we had deer, if the nose was not wet and shiny, we made a call to the vet. You know, so you really do want, um, not necessarily dripping resin, although ours looked like that many times, you know, um, there's something nice to look at in between, but you do want a nice gloss on your nose. 
So now we're going to move up to the eye. We've got them all cleaned up. Um, and we're going to install a nictitating membrane. And earlier in the process, we had talked to you about um, the eye angle and some reference and looking at the whole front corner of the eye. And uh, so we'll go back through. Tom's got um, our eye reference book sitting here. Do you want to show them um, as I install this? We have talked about this before, so I'll go through this process kind of quick. But um, you know, somebody's going to read this. Reference. Is Somebody's going to say, you're using white tail for, um, I guess, for nictitating membrane placement, caruncle placement. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Don't correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but uh, <laughs> I think uh, I'm going to, I have no problem with this white tail book. And we will have mule deer. Uh, Mandy said we're, she's hot on the trail of mule deer and elk. Close Great up. Valentine's gift idea. You got your hands right there. Uh, but now what, this is the nictitating membrane, something, and this is a commercial membrane you can buy. They're injection molded. And I have just taken and trimmed that membrane. You can see we're actually gonna show a very, very small amount of it. So I'm gonna trim, I already trimmed the top corner, I'm gonna trim just a little bit out of the bottom. So I'm not having to tuck too much material. And then I'm going to come in here in the very front, and as the side drive, we came in with our tucking tool and we made just a little bit of accommodation. Uh, I've got that opened up, and then we're going to we're going to put a little bit of material in there, and we're going to slide that membrane in place. Um, did you get any of those bamboo um, tools that were discontinued before they were discontinued? That is like my favorite tool ever. I did. Then I got a whole bunch. I'm gonna have to steal them. We just got them in. They're back ordered. Oh, they're back ordered. Mm -hmm. We do have them again. Yep. So the thousands that I bought to <laughs> hock them to people that never got them, I'm not gonna make out like a bandit yeah. now. Shoot. They're hard to get. I heard. <laughs> That's the ranch horse, isn't it? Yes. Bamboo. There's one pan out there limping around right now because of this stick. Alright, so I'm just gonna clear that up. Slide this in place. So leaving the bottom to trail out. If you look at your reference material. More often than not, you're going to see that nictitating membrane sits on a slope, something like this. I'm going to try to recreate that. I'm going to have to step in front of the camera for just a second. So. And when you're Let's using any, these, any of these white based eyes, be careful not to overdo the white so you make them look startled. It's really fun to give them um, attitude and a, a look to the left, look to the right, look close up, but keep it very, very subtle. Um, when white banded eyes first came out, I think the first ones that anybody had were like the Optec with a very wide band all the way around them. And I did not know what a nictitating membrane was, so I mounted my deer with this big white scleral membrane in the front, not knowing that the nictitating membrane would temper it and tone it down. And I would have customers come and say, wow, do they really have that? much white in the front corner of that, oh yeah, state of the art, yep, you only get the best here, but it was because I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Janet wants to know how come you don't put the membrane in right after you mount him? We tried that a lot. Yeah. Um, if we do, we'll usually pull them out at this point and reinsert them Re because they always seem to buckle on me. Yeah, um, I do, I like to install the membrane um, temporarily as you're mounting and it just gives you a very nice representation of what exactly Where it should be, that yeah. white is going to look like. Um, I got, so this deer was caked in the field and brought to us um, because it had to come across state borders and the back corner of the eye was damaged so we've got a pretty good little scar here that I'm going to just catch and repair. here. Um, as Tom said, we're going to go through and catch all of these little repairs that, that occur.
occur um, just during the process of commercial taxidermy work or not? And there will be a lot of little things that tear duct might open up on you. You can soak things up if you have to. Um, hopefully, if you do a good enough job, it's very minor and a little bit of epoxy will fix it. And I'm using some of that flesh epoxy just because I had it mixed up in the dips. It'll set up quick. You guys didn't have to watch me mix anymore, but that's why this is showing. You can also mix in um, a darker epoxy, which uh, allows you to use just a little less paint. Um, we could have done that. And put just a very little bit in the corner of the tear I feel like it opened up just a slight bit. Making sure that I don't fill the crease. It still needs to fold over the top. I'm just going to take it a little bit. Of that. I think that was a person cutting the tear ducts. <laughs> Did I do that? Nope. Take it. <coughs> Maybe it was our sewing machine, our human sewing machine. It was me. We continue to shape and work the, work the eyelid structure. Um, I'll continue to do that. I want to smooth this though. I'm going to take a little bit of water. Alcohol works good. You had mentioned alcohol mm -hmm. when we were trying to get out some of our mixing material. Why would we use alcohol in um, terms of water? Um, water can rehydrate your skin. So when you have a ice set that you're extremely happy with, you put water on it, it can move, distort, shrink more. Um, alcohol will evaporate fast and do a really good job of cleaning, cleaning up your eye and all your membrane. Um, this is gonna be a really, really exceptionally nice looking builder. Look at that hide. It's pretty. It's very pretty. pretty. This was one that had really pretty color. Uh, now I'm going to just install the charcoal right in the very front corner. Um, those of you that um, sculpt the, the charcoal in your skin, you can do that. This here again had very little cut skin. We weren't able to do that with the clay, but we get just very. And the charcoal, for those of you that don't know, if you stick your finger in the front corner of your eye, you'll feel a little bump. And that's the conical. It's barely visible. It is. And, and the rule of thumb, it should not be visible from the front. Um, it does sit in and around the corner. Um, so I'm going to put this in place. And soften it. You have just an impression of slightly where it went in the skin. So I know I'm headed with it. forms and the sagebrush forms actually have a little triangle up in the front that you can cut out to make room. I want to, I'm going to change the structure of the bottom lid just a slight bit. I've got a little wobble right there from drying. And get that, what I'm looking for is that slight Curve down right here. <coughs> you see right in the very front. So this lid went down, rises, and then falls in toward the tear duct. So I'm going I'm to help that out just a tiny bit with a little tiny bit of epoxy um, that we are going to paint over. And stand out like that. Yeah, the Sagebrush Series Meal Deer are available in, oh man, are they 19s or do they go to 18 and a half? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the early seasons do. Yeah. Uh, we have a semi upright series of sagebrush mule deer for archery muzzle loader deer, which are typically full size heads and shoulders, but slender in the neck just because of the rut. And uh, we have a 
get to be a bigger and bigger selection of semi sink yogurt. Um, very, very pretty attitude from the over here. And so, as you can see, I kind of added just a little shape down here to the bottom. Come on that now, brush over, smooth my epoxy. I'm going to grab some either safety solvent or alcohol. Nice and smooth here. And next week, we're going to continue. We'll, now that you've seen the nictidine membrane, the chronicle, and the boxing eye, um, we will play with the ears a little bit. We'll try to have all the epoxy work done, and I think we're going to paint. Is that right? Yeah. Next week, we'll do all our paint. Do little paint. cosmetics. And uh, for paint, some of you have been uh, introduced to Createx water-based paint already, um, but we're going to use Createx, and it's probably the best water-based paint on the market. <coughs> and uh, sprays through an airbrush effortlessly. Um, you can do fine, fine detail. You can do airlines. Um, it's just a great product. I always have been telling people that we have not, somebody asked me today, I said, we haven't run our exhaust fan for months, have we? And Createx is good, color fast, has a lot of uh, exceptional attributes like uh, uh, soft erase. Um, you can erase with your finger, you can erase with different tools. I know Mandy has a brand new little smudge tool she's interested in or that probably have, don't you? <laughs> a little smudge tool for oh. pointed on the ends. Um, a lot of new that works really good with Createx paints. And, Bradley uh, Ryan says he loves Createx. It's awesome. It's it's really good. Uh, we have painted with lacquers for forty years, and I have switched many times, but never been as happy as what we are with Createx. It's a great great yeah. product. Vibrant colors, color fast. Do we have a giveaway this week? We do. We are giving away um, Mule Deer Pear Eyes, and the winner of that shared last week's live video is Bobby Gilmore. And these are the pear um, with blood vessels. If I should take out. Oh, plastic. that's an attractive, attractive Mule Deer Eye. That's a nice eye. Because it's in the plastic, it doesn't give it as much justice, but there it is. All right, and if you look over here, you can see all of our catalog selfie submissions that we are doing. <coughs> and what we are doing is we have created an album on Facebook that you will be able to see here shortly. And um, how you'll win is you will, the photo that has the most likes um, will win a $100 gift card for Matuska Taxidermy. And you can either submit your photo in the comments of that album, or you can send it to us through Messenger. If you don't see your photo in the album, um, it may have gotten hidden due to Facebook's privacy policy. So go ahead and resend that in and we will get that posted. So again, we're kind of leaving the $100 um, gift card up to the public. So make sure you get your friends and family Facebook friends and family to vote for your picture if you um, enter so you can get the $100. Yeah. Go ahead and share the album so all of your friends can see it and vote for your selfie or photo. Um, there's really unique ones that have been sent in. Um, and then also we wanted to share with you a, part, a feature of our new website is you are able to submit a photo um, and this is one that was submitted. We there was not a name with it, so if this is yours, please let us know so we can give you credit for that. And how you are going to post that is you are going to go on our website, and at the very top of our menu, there is going to be a customer customer gal gallery, and you will click the submit your photos, and as you see, there is an arrow where you will upload your photo. So that's something that's pretty cool. Very fun, nice and easy. Yeah.
Good job, our mule deer is taking shape. He's getting there. We've got a little ways to go. Like you said, we'll come back and we'll finish up uh, next week. We'll give them all paint, and paint inside the ears. And we'll show you uh, antlers, maybe some hanger choices, oh, sure. uh, painting. Yeah. All right, and then as you're going to see on the screen that comes up next, um, we have put together a Valentine's Day gift idea for you or your hunters or taxidermists in your family. Um, so that's coming up in two weeks. <coughs> and next week is part five, Mule Deer Shoulder Mount. We gotta get this done pretty soon. <laughs> Make sure to like and share um, this video for your chance to be the winner next week. So again, this week's winner is Bobby Gilmore. So Bobby, get a hold of us and we'll tell you how you can win. Um, and make sure you share the video for next week. Good job, girls. Give us a call, 1-800-488-3256 if you have any questions. Right, see you next week. It's a wrap.